Have you been struggling with a caloric deficit and not losing weight? You're not alone. I was there for years and I'm creating this video to share with you my history of being in a caloric deficit and not being able to lose weight and how I found a solution for that problem. Tune in to learn more. Hey everybody, I'm Kelly Alexa, fitness fanatic, serial entrepreneur, confidence coach, and most recently, keto convert. About a year ago, well, a little over a year now, God, time flies, uh, I converted to, <laughs> that sounds like a religious experience. <laughs> I've never said it that way before. I converted to keto, and that is part of what I'll be talking about today. Um, and had this incredible weight loss transformation. And again, that is part of what I'm gonna talk about today because before that, I had been uh, relentlessly dieting, relentlessly struggling in a caloric deficit, but unable to lose weight. And for me, going keto was a miraculous solution. And it is for many, many, many women, and I will explain why. I've learned why, and I'll share that with you, and certainly share um, some references and things that you can look into um, if you'd like to explore that further. So before anything else, let's dive in and get started. All right, guys, you know the drill. Make sure that you are subscribed here to my channel if you aren't yet, and when you do subscribe, make sure that you also hit that cute little bell so that you are notified whenever we push out a new video so that you don't miss a thing. All right, everybody, welcome back. Um, diving in to share with you my history, a um, little bit of my weight loss story, or more so my <sighs> weight loss struggle story um, before most recently going keto. Uh, my so I mentioned at the beginning of this video that, um, you know, I'm creating this video for those of you who are struggling, you're in a caloric deficit, you're not losing weight, I feel you. I was there for years. Um, I have been somebody who, honestly, I, when I look back over my life, I, I, I certainly can see patterns retrospectively. Is that the right word I'm looking? Retroactively. Retro, well, both, retrospectively and retroactively. Um, we don't see patterns sometimes until later in life, um, but I certainly can see that it was after going on the pill when I was 19 that I started to gain a certain amount of weight. I'd always been, I'd always had like a curvy hourglass figure, but I certainly became more curvy. Um, and, and I just would say, I, I don't wanna say after going on the pill, I immediately had problems or, or I was feeling like I was trying to lose weight at that time in my 20s. I really never, became aware, truthfully, the first time in my life that I became aware of wanting to lose weight was when I was 25. Um, I had been going to college, I think it was, no, it was maybe not 25, 23, 24, I don't know what age I was specifically, but when I was just about finish, finishing high, not high school, excuse me, when I was just about finishing college at the Ohio State University, the Ohio State University, uh, my best friend Wendy and I decided that we were going to make the smart move to move to Pensacola, Florida and finish school at the community college down in Pensacola. What a dumbass move. <laughs> we were chasing some boys. Um, and clearly we didn't finish college down there. We didn't go to a lick of school. Um, we just partied all the time and we had a really great time doing it. But um, we moved down to Pensacola. We chased the boys. We chased a lot of boys. We drank a lot of alcohol. We spent a lot of time eating at Old Country Buffet and we ate a ton of carbs. And, and just, I gained so much weight down there. It was crazy. But the funny thing was, is I was, both Wendy and I were blissfully unaware at the time um, of really, gay. I, I just don't think we had the body awareness and I just slowly but surely was gaining weight. But I, I just don't think that, I just wore blazers a lot and, um, it's my dog, sorry, wore blazers a lot and, you know, um, anyway, by the, I do remember that by the time I moved back home to Columbus, Ohio, 
I was a size 12. I think I was, a, I'm 5'5". Five five. I was 178 pounds. I remember getting on the scale when I got home. And I, I remember my mom saw me at the airport and she was like, like, what happened to you? I had put sun in, in my hair. So my hair was like the color of my nails. It was just this crazy orangey blonde. And I had gained all this weight from drinking and partying and all of that stuff. So that was the first time in my life that I, you know, gained weight and I became aware that I need to lose weight. And that's when I first started doing some research and became interested in fitness. That was when the low fat craze was out. That book by Susan Powder was out, Stop the Insanity. I read that book. I started doing step aerobics. Um, that led me down the road later to working out with weights with the firm videos that led me to Kathy Friedrich and, and Tybo. And, you know, it just, it just led me down the road to becoming in love with fitness, working out, um, everything with diet and exercise that led me to body for life by Bill Phillips. Um, that led me to being interested in figure competitors and figure competitions, following a lot of, uh, this was probably back in 2005. Um, I found bloggers that were, um, usually most of them were like, uh, fitness competitors. And I started reading, um, you know, I followed people like Jenny Lynn, um, Monica Brandt started, you know, reading muscle and fitness, um, ended up, I remember how cool it was that I ended up meeting Jenny Lynn and becoming, you know, besties with her. And, um, anyway, that's when I first started my body, my, my body first, you know, started changing was when I went on the pill. And then I first gained weight in my, in my mid twenties, first started dieting and became interested in fitness in my mid twenties. Um, I never had an easy time losing weight, but progressively over the years, you know, um, I, I still was able to, to, keep a reasonable figure. Um, but I don't, I never felt like I ever got to a point where, you know, I'll just say this, you know, never since college did I ever feel like good in a bikini. Never did I ever feel like I was in a position that I, I didn't, I always felt like I needed to be on a diet. I always felt like I was striving to lose weight and I wasn't where I wanted to be. So, um, I was always ever since graduating from college and gaining a little bit more weight after college in the corporate work environment. Um, I was always working out, always dieting, always reading the latest fitness book, always trying to find out what would work for me. And even though, um, I never really, f and, and I started this YouTube channel back in 2000, end of 2008, I think maybe 2009, you know, and that's when I started talking about my fitness passion here. And you can go back and, and see my, my ups and my downs and my evolution. But the funny thing is like all those years I was working out relentlessly. And I just had some times where I would lose weight and, and, you know, make some progress. I never reached my goal. I never got to a place where I was like, wow, I feel great. I feel like I can, you know, go on vacation and feel good in a bikini again. I, I never, ever felt like I'd reached a goal in all of my adult life till now. Um, I'd never felt that way. Um, like I said, there were times where I, I'd made a certain amount of progress and I started to feel really good, but then my body would backfire again. And I will tell you in most recent years, for sure, I do remember specifically. So I'm going to tell you there were two or three specific times in my adult life with, with relation to caloric deficit that, um, I, I noticed big, um, changes in my life. So, um, I'd never really counted calories before. And, um, I feel like there's a couple points I want to make here. Um, the first time I ever started counting calories, um, it was, let me think, 
because because I'm trying to th- I, I really don't even think that that when I first came home from Pensacola and I weighed 178 pounds, I don't think I was counting calories. I think what I did is I just, that was when the low fat diet first came out and I just started eating low fat and, and working out and I lost weight. But when I graduated college and I got into the work environment and I was suddenly eating, um, you know, all the time at, at, at work and, and not working out as much, um, I gained some weight and um, I'm trying to think of who, oh, I remember reading a USA Today article and it was, there was, there was a statistic in there. I, I was reading it at, a, at an airport and they said something to the effect of if you just ate an extra, you know, 100 calories a week or 100, yeah, 100 calories a week. And then they were explaining how 100 calories a week is, um, you know, 400, that would be 400 calories um, a month. And, and that would be, you know, an extra, whatever it was, is it, is it, it was, it was going to be 10 pounds a year. So what would 10 pounds a year be? Um, you do the math. 10 pounds a year would basically be, because they were saying 3,500 calories, um, 3,500 calories, 100 calories a day. That's what it was. Um, because if you do 100 calories a day, that's, that's basically about 3,000 calories a month, give or take, right? And I remember reading that and going, an extra 100 calories a day. And right when I was reading that, that USA Today article, I was eating these Snack Wells cookies. So this was back in the kind of still the low fat phase of life of, of life. And I was eating these snack wells cookies that were very popular at the airports. And, um, they, it was 200, 220 or 250 calories for one of these things. And I used to get them all the time. I'm like, well, there's no fat in them. And I just thought, wow, you know, I don't even think about it when I buy these, but it's 220 calories. And if I just had that, or if I just had an extra banana and I didn't think about it, like it'd be so easy to have an extra hundred calories a day. And that's if I gain 10 pounds this year, then I'd gain another 10 pounds next year. And then another 10, like that's, that's, that's how people get fat. And that's when I'm like, I've got to start counting my calories. And so I started counting my calories and I started figuring out what a caloric deficit for it was. And for me back then, Somehow or another, I figured that I was supposed to be eating 1,300 calories. I don't know why I went that. I think it was 1,200 or 1,300. Maybe that was just the low-calorie du jour of the day. Um, but I remember being very low, and I remember that I did a, I did a lot of lean cuisine meals and um, a lot of uh, skinny cow um, ice cream bars and... I started counting calories and I lost weight because I, I was counting calories. And that was the first time I became aware of counting calories and looking up nutritional information and being aware of the importance of caloric deficit. So now would be a good time for me to insert here in this video that even though I'm going to share with you my struggles with caloric deficit, my ups and downs, and my ultimate transformation, oh, my hair's coming out of this thing again, my ultimate transformation with keto and, and what that's taught me as well about caloric deficit for the, those of us with you know insulin problems and, and what it means for caloric deficit and all of that. I am still going to tell you, I firmly believe caloric deficit is the single most important thing. It is where everybody should start. If you want to lose weight, the number one thing that you should be looking at is caloric deficit. That is what, that is absolutely the fundamental basis of losing weight. Now, the reason I'm saying that and the reason that I'm, I'm laughing is um, this past weekend, I've, I had one of my um, videos on TikTok go like, batshit crazy viral and I had at all of these psychopaths kind of like attack me about this topic of caloric deficit and misinterpreting what what my view is um, what I said about caloric deficit yada 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 so I'm clarifying my point where I have more time here um, a little bit more or articulating a little bit more because I do want to be very clear it is important, and for the vast majority of people, when your body is functioning functioning normally, the way it should be, 
caloric deficit is what's going to work, whether you're paleo, whether you're vegan, whether you're keto, whatever, whatever diet approach you're going to take, you need to be in a caloric deficit to lose weight. That said, um, what I'm going to touch on as we close here shortly is that there are certain segments of the population and the people that I'm referring to are going to be women age 40 plus who have metabolic damage due to uh, hormonal imbalance, particularly what I'm referring to, or most specifically, is women that are in the perimenopause, menopause, postmenopause phase of life that are dealing with insulin resistance. And the vast majority, or you know, what majority of, of those women age 40 plus that are in perimenopause, menopause, postmenopause, what percentage of those women will have insulin resistance issues? I don't know. It's a pretty strong majority from what I'm understanding, from what I've been told by my doctor, other doctors, research, books I've read. <sighs> Those women, I'm one of them, who, who have gotten to the point where all of a sudden your body is changing, you have all of these hormone issues, and suddenly you can't lose weight. Suddenly you're in a caloric deficit and you can't lose weight. That would be me. That was me for years. I was working out six to seven days a week. I was, and this, you know, when did it precisely happen? I don't know because all of these years, as I've just shared with you, I'd been a fitness fanatic. I'd been working out all the time. Um, I'd had certainly a, a body that had always, you know, struggled. I'd never been that lean athletic body type. So I, I never, you know, noticed that, oh, I was lean and athletic before and now suddenly I'm curvy and I can't lose weight. It wasn't a black and white transition for me or anything like that. There definitely was a time right around age 40 that there was a noticeable difference in my body. That's when my hormones started to change. Um, but when did I specifically notice that, hey, I'm in a caloric deficit and it's not working it took me a while to accept that, that, you know, it's like I almost had to exhaust all efforts. And then finally I'm like, okay, I've done it all. And that's when I finally threw my hands up in the air, hired uh, Alex Mazurko as my trainer. She put me into a reverse diet as many of you have already probably seen. If you haven't, I will link up to that podcast below. You can go to kellyalexa.com and, and check that out. Um, I hired her because at that point, um, I knew I wasn't able to get where I needed to be on my own. I was doing 1600 calories a day, carb cycling, um, adding in a 24 hour fast two times a week. I was working out. My husband just said this to me the other day. He's like, you would add in a second workout, a second like power, power walk, a 45 minute walk in the Austin heat. I would, you know, I was doing everything I can to obsess over every calorie that I consumed. Even if we made, you know, like um, a dessert, a dessert, you know, I was like at night, if we were going to make this like my favorite cookie dough that I was obsessed with, like I would measure out all the ingredients in the cookie dough and I would measure out the amount I would put in the ramekin because we just eat the cookie dough and I would measure out the amount that I'd put in the ramekin so that I knew how much was in my weekly cal caloric allowance and how much if I had more than that that ramekin how much I needed to deduct from my cheat meal on Friday or whatever I mean I was so obsessive about hitting my macros and trying to lose weight because I had listened to Jordan Syatt, nothing wrong with what Jordan Syatt's putting out, but I had convinced myself that the reason I wasn't losing weight was because I wasn't adhering to a caloric deficit enough. And so I was just relentless and I had this little piece of paper and I had figured out what, you know, what my caloric deficit was and how I could carb cycle and calorie cycle. And then I would have my cheat meal on Friday. And, you know, how could I do my two 24 hour fast so that I could have a little bit less, less here and a little bit more here. And I tracked everything and I lost nothing. I could not lose any weight. And I, was, I would go see my functional medicine doctor and we'd check my blood work and we'd weigh me and 
I, 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 the, the scale would not move. And somewhere in this period, I was so desperate. I even had my last, this was my last doctor, my last functional medicine doctor. I even had my last functional medicine doctor put me on the HCG diet because nothing was working. Nothing was working. Think about it. I'm working out six days a week, seven days a week, doing sometimes two a days. I'm, um, you know, asking my trainer at Gold's Gym what to eat. I'm asking my nutritionist what to eat. I'm asking my doctor what to eat. I'm, I'm tracking all of my foods. I'm eating, you know, taking my bioidentical hormones. I'm taking all my supplements. I'm eating clean organic foods and I can't lose weight. I'm not gaining a lot of weight. It's not like I'm gaining five, 10, 15 pounds. I'm just literally like stay, I'm frozen in time. I'm just staying the same, but I'm like full of inflammation and, and just knowing that something's wrong. And I remember going to my, my last doctor and I'm like, I will do anything to lose weight. And he said, well, you know, there's something pretty extreme we can try. And I'm like, I don't care. I will do it. I will pay anything. Just help me lose weight. And he said, well, we can do the HCG diet, but you know, it's 500 calories a day. And I said, I just, I don't care. I'm so embarrassed by my body. I'm so like, I'm in the fitness business. I own a fitness company. I'm, it, I, I'm, I'm mortified that I work out all the time. I eat right and I can't get fit and I'm, I'm tired of it. And he put me on this, uh, HCG diet with the shots. I put this huge needle in my leg every morning. I ate nothing but chicken breast or deli meat with crackers. It's pretty much all you can eat on the HCG diet. Um, and I think black coffee and diet soda, like 500 calories. There's not much you can eat for 500 calories. I think I was, I could have maybe some pickles or something. Um, but that's about all I had. And, um, I did have a body composition change. In other words, like it looked like I lost weight because my clothes got a lot looser and I actually have video that I took of like an Instagram and you know, my, my jeans got a lot looser and it looked like it was really working for me. But on the scale, I only lost two pounds. So that just goes to show you like, I would get, I would, I would experience like this tiny little bit of success, but then, you know, it, it wouldn't work. And so then after that, I was trying, uh, my friends, you know, f fasting <sighs> program and, and asking my trainer what to do. And, you know, everybody just gave me conflicting advice. And the bottom line is again, shortly thereafter, that's when I stumbled on Jordan Syed's podcast. And I heard his interview with somebody who had hypothyroidism. And I'm like, that must be it. That must be what that must be it. I'm not counting calories. I'm being too casual with my food. And that's when I started religiously counting my calories and religious. And it didn't matter. It didn't matter. And so shortly, like I said, shortly thereafter, I finally got to the point where I'm like, okay, nothing, nothing I'm doing is working. And I, you know, at least I'm smart enough to know the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and figuring out, you know, thinking that someday it's going to just magically work. I knew that I was not able to figure this out. I hired a trainer. I invested in her helping me out. I had seen that she had helped other people with broken metabolisms um, do a reverse diet and, and get their body in a position where they could respond to diet down the road again. And she had said to me before, she's like, when was the last time you were not dieting? And I'm like, I don't remember. And she said, are you serious? And I'm like, I have always been in a caloric deficit. She's like, you're not supposed to always be in a caloric deficit. And I said, I've always been in a caloric deficit, always. She's like, <laughs> so she put me on a reverse diet. Um, we brought me up from 1600 calories to 20, I think 2200, 2500 maybe. Um, I did not gain weight when I was in um, the reverse diet. I think maybe I gained two or three pounds and I was in the reverse diet for like 10 months. So I think that just goes to show you like all that time I was in the reverse diet, 
we dramatically scaled back my working out. I was much, almost a thousand calories more a day. I'm just about done, babe. A thousand calories more a day. And did I double my weight? No, my body just kind of relaxed and took a break. And then after that, I had by that time hired my new functional medicine doctor. When she told me I was ready to go on a diet, it was keto. <laughs> and it was the last thing I wanted to do. I was the most skeptical person on the planet about keto. I've told this story in my other videos. If you wanna hear that story, go. You'll see my playlist for keto attached to the end of this video. I won't go over that story here and be redundant. You can go watch it in, in the keto playlist. But as resistant as I was to it, it was the best thing for me. She told me that it wasn't my thyroid that was preventing me from losing weight. It wasn't, uh, you know, being in a caloric deficit that was preventing me from losing weight or, or any of the things that I was doing in the past that were wrong. It was, she said, we need to address your insulin and your inflammation. And if we address those two things, your body will lose weight. She said, your body has stopped um, the ability to release fat cells. And you know, she explained things to me back then. I'm sure I'm not able to remember how she, I wish I would have recorded the call. And I'm hoping I can get her back um, to do a call with me so that I can publish it here. Um, Cause she's so, so smart. Um, Dr. Ruthie Harper in um, Austin, Texas, but she's brilliant. She knows exactly what to do. She explained to me why keto is so perfect for women with insulin resistance. And she put me on the same exact caloric um, window, 1600 calories. So whereas before I was at 1600 calories, working out, eating right, unable to lose weight, I go keto at 1600 calories and I've lost 36 inches and 30 pounds effortlessly. And I literally mean effortlessly. I've never lost weight so easily in my entire life. And I have, it's June, it's July 5th. It's now been a year and a month, over a month. And I've lost the weight, I've kept it off. And this is my lifestyle. It's the easiest thing I've ever done. Um, I have learned again, like I've referenced before, I don't, I don't want to get into too much detail in this video. I'll be doing other videos where I'll be sharing uh, what I've learned about why keto works for insulin resistance. I'm doing a lot more reading and research on it now um, and it's fascinating, but it just works. And if you are somebody who is struggling and you're in a caloric deficit, and you're unable to lose weight, and you're, a, and, and you're a woman age 40 plus, I do encourage you to, to do some research. Don't just take my word for it. Um, do some research on this topic. First of all, of course, feel free to reach out to me. Leave a comment below, ask any questions. Um, I have, number one, a wealth of information that I've covered here in my keto playlist, a wealth of information on my blog over at kellyalexa.com. I will be happy to answer any questions you have. Um, it, going keto has changed my life. Um, and further, I do have a, um, because I'm so passionate about this, I want more women to know. Um, and I didn't want to be limited with only providing help for women by offering one-on-one -on -one keto coaching. So I do offer that. Um, however, it's cost prohibitive for a lot of women, understandably. And I can't offer too much of my time to do one-on-one -on -one coaching um, because I need to run my business. So um, I've created a five-day online keto boot camp for women because that allows me to have an online course that runs itself, that lets me teach women how to go keto the way that I did so they can do it the right way. It can be a lifestyle. Um, they can lose weight effectively. There's a Facebook group where they can ask me questions every day. We have guest speakers that are coming up. Um, my doctor will be one of them, for example, um, other doctors and best-selling authors. Um, but if you're interested in that, or if you're interested, of course, in private coaching, or if you just have a simple question, leave that in the comments below. I'm more than happy to answer them. Uh, this is my passion. I struggled for years. And to be able to finally find something that works, that has changed my life, 
and that has changed the lives of so many other women, I just want to shout it from the rooftops. And that certainly is what I plan to do. But for now, I'll just shout it from YouTube. So um, I hope that this video was helpful for you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening. Again, um, if this video was helpful, give it a like. Hopefully you are subscribed. If not, make sure you are subscribed. And of course, hit the little bell so you're notified. And again, I encourage you, let me know what questions you have down below. I'm happy to answer them. And um, I will see you guys next time on, I will set on YouTube. <laughs> on the Kelly O show. Hey guys, I hope this video was super helpful for you. As I mentioned before, if you're interested in finding out more information about my keto experience and just keto in general, I've got a playlist hooked up for you right here. And of course, let me know if you have any questions.